Hi everyone. So we are starting our lecture on embryology and in this video we'll be covering the events that occur up to the first seven days of life. So before getting started, the point to note about embryology is that to score maximum marks in embryology we have to maximize our diagrams in our answer paper and minimize the words. So the tip is to draw maximum diagrams to score maximum marks. So now let's get started with the topic. The story of human life begins with the formation of gametes. So the first event that we need to learn is about spermatogenesis and oogenesis. We might have already learned about these two topics on our uh, physiology. So let's get started with that. So spermatogenesis, we know it is a process of formation of sperms in males. Once the male uh, attains puberty, the primordial germ cells, they will develop into uh, spermatogonia. So these are our spermatogonia. And what is the karyotype? They will have the normal 44XY karyotype of males. The spermatogonium will undergo mitosis, repeated cycles of mitosis. And they will form the primary spermatocyte. And each one spermatogonium will undergo repeated cycle of mitosis to produce 128 primary spermatocyte. So that's our next step. And that will have a karyotype of 44XY because in mitosis there is no chromosomal separation. Then what happens is that these primary spermatocytes will undergo the first meiotic division. And in meiosis there will be chromosomal separation and we will end up with 256 secondary spermatocyte. So one spermatogonium giving rise to 256 secondary spermatocyte and uh, they will be having 22X and 22Y chromosomes and they will then undergo the meiosis 2. So the second meiotic division is undergone by the secondary spermatocyte and that will give rise to the formation of 512 spermatids. 256 times 2 is 512 and these 512 spermatids they will develop into our sperms. So these are our sperms. So how much sperms do we have? From one spermatogonium we will have 512 sperms are found in the end. So this is the process of spermatogenesis and the process by which spermatids undergo, uh, spermatids develop into sperm is what we call as spermiogenesis. So this process is the spermiogenesis. Now coming to the oogenesis. While spermatogenesis starts at uh, puberty, the oogenesis happens way before. So in the fetal life, there are a large number of uh, oogonium, primary oogonium, that is having a chromosome karyotype of 44XX. And this primary oogonium will develop into the primary oocyte. So these are our primary oocyte. And when does this happen? This happens in the fetal period. So this occurs at the fetal period. Now the primary oocyte, once uh, the female attains maturity or at puberty, during the menstrual cycle, what happens is that the primary oocyte, uh, which was arrested at the prophase stage during the fetal period, it will undergo meiosis 1. So it will undergo the first meiotic division and by the end of ovulation, we will have the uh, ovum. We will have the secondary oocyte, not the ovum. We will have the secondary oocyte. And we'll have a small polar body. This is our polar body. The secondary oocyte, when fertilization occurs, what happens is that the secondary oocyte gets arrested in the metaphase stage. And if fertilization occurs, what happens is that it will undergo meiosis 2. And it will give rise to the formation of ovum. This is our ovum. And it will also give rise to the secondary, uh, second polar body. So this is our second polar body. So that's what happens and uh, this is our first meiotic division. These are the events which occur in spermatogenesis and oogenesis. By the end of this, uh, what happens is that the gametes are formed. Now these gametes must fuse to form the zygote and this process is what we call as fertilization. Now where does fertilization occurs? Fertilization occurs in the ambular 
isthmic, isthmic junction so the ampullary isthmic junction of the uterus this is where the fertilization occurs so we know that a uterus has this is the uterus it has an infantibulum with the fimbriae and then it has an ampulla and it has a narrow isthmus uh, this is not the uterus uh, it's about the fallopian tube sorry once again it's uh, not the uterus it's the fallopian tube so it is at this junction that, that is the ampullary isthmic junction of fallopian tube where fertilization occurs now what happens during fertilization or how does fertilization occur now let me first label these parts this is the zona pellucida of the oocyte this is the perivitelline space this is the cytoplasm of oocyte so these three parts are related to the ovum right so these three parts are related to the ovum now what are these cells these are uh, round cells these round cells are the corona radiator which surrounds the ovum and we know that this is our sperm now the sperm is going to fertilize the ovum now at the anterior end of the sperm we know that there is an acrosome right now acrosome and zona pellucida interact with each other when the sperm approaches the ovum the reaction between the zona pellucida and the acrosome leads to the acrosomal reaction and the secretion of enzymes and by this secretion of enzymes what happens is that the zona pellucida dissolves now if you can see that in this region the zona pellucida has dissolved and because of that dissolution uh, there is also a reaction which occurs in the inside the oocyte inside the oocyte the lysosomal enzymes are uh, the lysosomal enzymes are released and all of these together that is the dissolution of the zona pellucida the acrosomal reaction and the release of lysosome by the cytoplasm will help the fusion of plasma membrane of the sperm with the plasma membrane or the uh, with the plasma membrane of the oocyte so these are the plasma membrane of oocyte and this is the plasma membrane of the sperm so these two will fuse and in the next step what happens is that the head end and the tail end will enter inside the oocyte so this is our oocyte while the plasma membrane they will remain outside so the plasma membrane of the sperm remains fused and outside while the head and the tail of the sperm enters into the oocyte and at this time the secondary the meiosis 2 of the secondary oocyte is completed the ovum is released the head of the sperm containing the uh, nucleus fuses with the ovum and that leads to the formation of zygote so this structure that we have here is our zygote now this zygote is surrounded by uh, the reddish layer which we have drawn here and that is our zona pellucida now this zona pellucida has an important role because if you look at the uterus this is where the zygote is present right that is at the ambulo isthmic junction now the zona pellucida is the layer which inhibits the implantation that is it prevents the zygote from penetrating the endometrium and that prevents implantation now let's see what happens to the zygote what happens is that the zygote uh, within the zona pellucida this is a zona pellucida and the zygote inside undergoes mitotic divisions so these zygote undergoes mitotic divisions to form two cell stage and from two cell they form to four cell from four cells to eight cells from eight cells they develop into 12 to 16 cell stage now what happens at the 12 to 16 cell stage is that within the zona uh, the zygote at the 12 to 16 cell scene they organize into an outer cell mass so there is a tightly packed outer cell mass this is the outer cell mass and there is a loosely packed inner cell mass these are the loosely packed inner cell mass and they contain 12 to 16 cells and this structure that is formed by repeated division this division is what we call as cleavage that's the term so they undergo cleavage the zygote undergo cleavage to form two cells four cells eight cells and 12 to 16 cells at the 12 to 16 cells they will organize into an outer cell mass and which is tightly packed and loosely packed inner cell mass and this stage is what is called as the morula 
So that is how the morula is formed. Now what happens is that the morula will then develop into the blastocyst. Through this journey, during the cleavage, what happens is that the uh, the zygote is traveling towards from the fallopian tube into the uterus towards the endometrium. It continues its journey. That's one thing to note. Now what happens is that the uterine fluid will enter into the embryo. The uterine fluid will enter into the embryo and they will push the inner cell mass into one end. So these dispersed inner cell mass will get pushed into one end because of the uterine fluid. And that structure that is formed which is at the 16 to 32 cell stage. So these are 16 to 32 cells and the structure that is formed is known as the blastocyst. Now what are the features of this blastocyst? So the uterine fluid as we have mentioned is secreted and this uterine fluid is called as the blastocyst. It's a uterine milk actually which provides nourishment and they are organized into an outer cell mass and this cell mass is now called as trophoblast. So the outer cell mass is what we call as a trophomast whereas the inner cell mass that is the embryo blast which gets pushed to one end. Now the end to which this embryo blast is attached that part is what we call as the polar trophoblast. So polar trophoblast is the area of the trophoblast where the embryo blast is present whereas the remaining part of uh, trophoblast that is called as mural trophoblast. So that's how the trophoblast we have two regions the part associated with the embryoblast which is a polar trophoblast uh, and the embryonic pole whereas the part that is away and the remaining part is called as the mural trophoblast. Now it is this blastocyst which contains 16 to 32 cells which is going to undergo the final step that is implantation. So implantation it occurs at the seven, 6 to 7 days. It occurs at the 6th or 7th day after fertilization. So that will complete by the end of implantation the one week of life or our first week of life is completed. Now this is our blastocyst right. This is our blastocyst. This is the epithelium actually. It's better to frame it like that. This is the epithelium of the uterus and this is the stratum compactum layer of endometrium. There are three layers which is not that important. So the uterus has stratum compactum, uh, stratum spongiosum and stratum basin and the uppermost or the superficial layer is the stratum compactum. Now what happens is that we have said that the zona pellucida right. So there used to be a zona pellucida which surrounded the uh, which surrounded our zygote and morula. Now this zona pellucida gets destroyed and it was the zona pellucida which was inhibiting the implantation. Once the zona pellucida is removed the blastocyst at 16 to 32 cell stage undergoes implantation. Now what happens here is that the blastocyst will enter into the uterine endometrium and then what happens is that by the end of 10 days so this happens at the 7th day this happens at the 6th day and the uh, blastocyst will enter the uterus and by the end of 10 to 12 days what happens is that this region where there is there is a breakage of the endometrium that area will be covered by the fibrin plug. We will discuss about this region for now this is the syncytial trophoblast we will discuss what it is in the next video when we will discuss about the second week of uterine life. And then by the end of two weeks what happens is that the uterine endometrium or the uterine epithelium will cover the entire blastocyst and this happens by the end of 14th day. And the blastocyst actually now develops into a bilaminar germ disc. Bilaminar germ disc. Now we'll discuss in detail about the bilaminar germ disc when we discuss about the second week of life. As of now, just know that implantation has occurred at the blastocyst stage, which enters into the uterine endometrium. Now, what we need to remember in addition is that, uh, as I have said earlier, the endometrium has stratum compactum, stratum spongiosum, and stratum basal. Only the stratum compactum and stratum spongiosum is involved whereas the stratum basal is not uh, perforated by the blastocyst. So that's about the events which occur in the first week of life. Now to summarize our story begins with spermatogenesis and oogenesis and these sperms undergo fertilization 
to produce ovum and after fertilization what happens is that there is formation of zygote and the zygote develops into the morula which is 60, uh, 12 to 16 cells having an inner cell mass which is loosely arranged and a densely packed outer cell mass. The morula develops into a blastocyst with the entry of uterine fluid known as a blastocyl which provides nutrition. The blastocyst is the 16 to 32 cell stage and this blastocyst undergoes implantation at the endometrium. So that's it for this video and that ends our first week of life.